Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Our top story, a Chinese-owned finance firm quietly purchasing U.S. education platforms. More on its ownership structure and the company's ties to the Chinese Communist Party. This company is collecting the data from the users who happen to be military members as well as their uh, family. The former head of the U.S. Justice Department accused of lobbying for a Chinese military company in a new report. At the time, she allegedly asked the Pentagon to take a top drone maker off a blacklist. An investigation across U.S. government agencies targeting Communist China's influence campaign in America. Find out what lawmakers are demanding. And bad news for China's ailing property sector. A credit ratings agency downgraded one of China's largest real estate developers. From K-12 through schools and universities to state libraries and the U.S. military, a report finds an American education platform quietly rose up the ranks with support from a Chinese-owned finance company. According to grassroots advocate group Parents Defending Education, more than 100 U.S. school districts have contracts with education site Tutor.com. The key issue lies within its ownership structure. In January 2022, Tutor.com was acquired by Chinese company Primavera. The venture capital firm was one of the earliest investors in TikTok's Chinese parent company ByteDance. Sitting on top of the pyramid is Primavera's chairman and CEO, Fred Hu. Reports says he's a member of the Chinese Communist Party, a statement Hu himself denied. What's more, records show Hu was a delegate of the CPPCC in China's Hunan province, an advisory body directly supervised by the Chinese regime. Besides Tutor.com, Primavera has quietly purchased a number of education companies, including U.S. test prep firm Princeton Review. Americans need to be 100% concerned about a foreign entity uh, buying up schools and influencing our children and our society. It's very serious. Through its connection with Tutor.com, Primavera currently holds a contract with the U.S. Defense Department. Last month, Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton wrote a letter to the Pentagon demanding that the agency sever ties with Primavera. In it, he described the partnership as ill-advised, reckless, and a danger to U.S. national security. Like ByteDance and other Chinese tech firms, Chinese law requires Primavera to turn over confidential business and consumer records to Beijing. Nicole Neely, president of Parents Defending Education, said parents deserve more control over who's collecting their children's information. She said the data problem is because on the U.S. side, quote, districts are completely asleep at the switch. So what we're talking about is your family values are being overwritten and overruled in the schools, the tutoring programs, and so on. So you have to understand this is a battle for your values and your children's lives. The education sector has long been a target for the CCP. Earlier this year, students at an Iowa high school received a personal invitation from Chinese leader Xi Jinping. They were offered an eight-day trip to China with all expenses covered. Xi previously said he hopes to bring 50,000 American teens to study in China in the next five years. To discuss more about Primavera CEO and China's strategic moves in the American education sector, we sat down with Philip Lenzicki, investigative reporter from the Daily Caller News Foundation. Philip Lenzicki, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you back on the show. Hi, Tiffany. Thanks for having me on. Now, digging into Primavera, you actually found that the founder and CEO has ties to the Chinese Communist Party. Tell us about that aspect. What we found is that on Primavera's website, in, uh, on the Chinese side, we, we found that it, uh, he's listed as being a member of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, and it says, it says that he joined in 2008. Now, we went to the uh, website for the specific provincial branch that he joined in, in Hunan, and uh, we found, in fact, yes, he's listed there um, on the roster, and there are even photos of him in attendance at meetings wearing this very uh, distinctive red clip-on badge. Um, We also found state-run media reports um, and even video of him um, wearing this badge and and, and talking about, you know, Belt and Road and whatnot. Uh, Additionally, we found that he's listed as being a quote-unquote director 
for something called an Entrepreneur Alliance for the Western Returned Scholars Association. Um, now, both the aforementioned Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, as well as the Western Returned Scholars Association, the U.S. government says that they both engage in um, influence operations. And so this presents a, uh, a serious concern given um, what the company Primavera has control of in the United States. On that note, a spokesperson for Premier told you that who is not a member of the CCP, Premier Capital has no ties to any political party in China, adding who is not an advisor to the Chinese government, belongs to none of the United Front organizations. Given all that you have found, though, is this just a blatant lie? Um, they do celebrate Halloween in China, so he might have just been dressing up, I suppose, but I doubt it. I think that it's more likely that um, they're they're playing maybe a word game. For all we know, uh, their you know tense could be the issue here. That um, you know, upon receiving the email prior to writing it, he <laughs> quit those organizations. It's unclear, but he might not currently, at the time of writing the email, be a member of these organizations. But um, for for uh, you know uh, the evidence that we found, it certainly appears as he, that he was in the past. Besides ByteDance, where else has Primavera been investing in that is causing concerns? Right. So um, in addition to its uh, investments in the education space with Princeton Review and, and Tutor.com, it's also made uh, some concerning investments both in China and the U.S. Um, in, in sort of uh, really uh, you know, paradoxical ways. So for instance, in China, we can start there, um, it's invested in a number of tech companies uh, such as uh, SenseTime um, that the US government has um, now you know, blacklisted for uh, having developed uh, specifically um, racial profiling, facial recognition technology that was used um, to uh, target uh, Uyghurs and others in China's western uh, Xinjiang province in support of China's ongoing genocide. Now, you take that and you sort of contrast it with investments that uh, Primavera has made in the United States. It's purchased actually a number of school systems, so not even just one school, but actually groups of schools throughout the United States. They have uh, established more or less um, sister uh, relationships with uh, mainland Chinese you know, schools and are either exchanges or um, other types of uh, back and forth going on. Um, so of course, when we pair that with this individual's relationship with this Western Return Scholars Association and what we know about its efforts to sort of um, uh, exploit um, you know, education, um, we can see that there could be some issues arising from this. Philip Lenzicki, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Reports of Chinese influence on Capitol Hill. An Obama-era attorney general allegedly tried to get her client, a Chinese military company, removed from the Pentagon's blacklist. According to Reuters, former attorney general under the Obama administration, Loretta Lynch, reportedly asked the assistant secretary of defense to remove DJI from the Pentagon's blacklist last July. Lynch used to run the Justice Department from 2015 to 2017. She's now a partner at the Paul Weiss Law Firm. DJI is Lynch's client. It's also the world's largest drone maker and makes over half the drones sold in the U.S. Some U.S. law enforcement agencies, including Maryland, also use DJI drones. Though there have been concerns that these drones could send sensitive American data directly to Beijing. The DOD added DJI to its blacklist in 2022, calling it a Chinese military company. In a letter to Assistant Secretary of Defense Laura Taylor Kale, Lynch said DJI should be taken off the blacklist because of its widespread use. A former assistant U.S. attorney and associate White House counsel also signed the letter. Both are partners at Paul Weiss. The letter requested confidential treatment. It is legal to advocate for foreign clients in the U.S., and lawyers are exempt from public disclosure under a decades-old law. Though some Congress members and transparency advocates have been pushing for a change. Senator Jim Risch is one of them. He said reforms are needed to prevent former U.S. government officials from lobbying for Chinese companies, given the blurry lines between Chinese companies and the state. Reacting to the news, Risch said, quote, it's appalling that former senior U.S. officials use their connections to serve the interests of U.S. adversaries. 
The Paul Weiss law firm and DJI declined to comment on Reuters' request. Lynch did not respond to Reuters' email. From the Department of Justice to the Drug Enforcement Administration, the House Oversight Committee announcing a probe across nine federal agencies Friday. The goal to root out the Chinese Communist Party's meddling operations in the U.S. In a written statement, Committee Chairman James Comer said China is waging war by influencing and infiltrating every economic sector and community in America. He said this is a threat to military readiness, technology, financial markets, agriculture, education, and intellectual property. The investigation is to find out what steps U.S. agencies are taking to counter what Comer called the CCP's ongoing political warfare. He said he's planning to call on more agencies in the coming weeks and months. China's real estate market is struggling. Prices of new homes in the country dropped for an eighth straight month in February. That's according to official data from Beijing released Friday. On a year-to-year basis, prices fell 1.4 percent, marking the biggest decline in 13 months. China's real estate sector, which makes up a quarter of its economy, has been embroiled in crisis. Once a growth engine, the sector is now dragging China's economy downward. China's second-largest real estate developer, Evergrande, defaulted in 2021. Over 50 developers have since followed suit, and thousands of people have lost their jobs. Authorities have tried to revive the sector with incremental steps instead of a major stimulus. They cut restrictions in order to lure home buyers, ask state banks to boost lending to residential projects, and also help to lower mortgage rates. But analysts told Reuters that it will take time for demand, plus home buyers' income and confidence, to recover this year. Bad news for China's property sector Friday. Credit ratings agency S&P Global put one of the country's biggest developers, China Vanke, on a downgrade warning. Vanke's credit rating went from a stable outlook to credit watch negative. This comes after Moody's downgraded Vanke to a junk rating Monday. Chinese media reports a banks are reportedly trying to bail out Vanke after the downgrade. Twelve major banks were allegedly in talks to offer Vanka a loan worth over $11 billion. That's to help it meet upcoming repayment deadlines. Vanka used to be one of China's largest developers, but it's been hammered by the plunge in housing demand and home prices. Beijing has been struggling to restore confidence in China's ailing real estate industry. Some of its biggest developers, like Evergrande and Country Garden, already defaulted on their debts. They're at risk of forced liquidation so that they can sell assets to pay off the massive debts. That's after a Hong Kong court ordered Evergrande to liquidate in late January. Though that ruling isn't expected to affect the company's operations in the near future. Details on the possible Vanka loan is still uncertain, but Vanka's stocks soared in Hong Kong following the reports closing over 5 percent higher in Shenzhen. You might have noticed how Top Gun Maverick attempted to strip the Taiwanese and Japanese flags off of Tom Cruise's jacket, or how Iron Man 3 inserted a Chinese doctor into the movie who saves the life of Tony Stark. Is it artistic license or something more sinister? These are the issues explored in the groundbreaking new documentary, Hollywood Takeover, China's control in the film industry. The NTD original film pulls back the curtain on how Hollywood is helping to further a global adversary's agenda, the consequences that will have on America's future, and what brave individuals are doing to change the tide. The documentary is now available to stream on Epic TV. And for more information about the documentary, please visit HollywoodTakeover.com. There's something magical about the movies that I just love. Hollywood invented America to the world in the old days. And as a medium, it's really powerful. But for some, that power isn't used for good. Sure, our way of life is being censored by the Chinese Communist Party. They said, we get a lot of our money out of China. Is there any way you could make this movie a little bit more attractive to the Chinese? Is it really just about money? Are there other parts at stake? I had friends in Hollywood who said, this will kill your career. You won't get funding. They're afraid of even mentioning one line. Chinese influence was playing into what we see in U.S. films. China said, you can't have that in there. And Hollywood listened. This is insane. 
This is a joke, right? We raised our hand and we dove right into it. But over time, all of us have been punched in the nose. The Chinese Communist Party followed no rules. What's at stake? The soul of the nation is at stake. We want indoctrination access to America. They could basically take over America without firing a shot because they control access to our minds. And we all know that their goal is global domination. People have been brainwashed without knowing it. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for three years. If you'd like to support us, consider donating. Find us at donorbox.org slash China dash in dash focus or subscribe to our partner platform Epic TV where you can watch our full episodes. Here's what to look out for in our second half. With the TikTok bill waiting for its turn on the Senate floor, multiple buyers are showing interest in snapping up the social media. How much is the wildly popular short video platform really worth? China's richest man is in the hot water as online nationalists claiming his bottled water empire isn't Chinese enough. What's behind the backlash? And a Canadian minister sends a warning to Beijing. Canada's mining sector won't accept Chinese investments, citing national security risks. Beijing lashed out at Ottawa, saying China won't stop investing. More on that after the break here on China in Focus. For around-the-clock original news coverage, visit us at ntd.com or download our NTD app. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you soon.